What do you consider is a safe upper limit for daily magnesium intake with and without the addition of choline citrate? Well, without choline citrate, we get the highest of what is generally available, which is one third. So while many forms of magnesium have much lower bioavailability. Mag oxide, mag, mag carbonate, mag sulfate have maybe three, four percent solubility bioavailability. The ion channel, the calcium magnesium ATPase ion channel saturates at about one third, a little above 30 percent. And so if you keep pushing more magnesium in, if you put more magnesium into the intestines, Two-thirds will stay in the intestines, build up to the point of hypermotility. People then generally run to the bathroom and run away from whoever gave them that. The reason that we pioneered and patented choline citrate was to make tiny nano droplets that are taken up by neutral pores. And I can tell you that I take 1,320 milligrams of elemental magnesium, which means two capsules, that's 220 milligrams, and a teaspoon of choline citrate. And I do that six times a day. Or I might take a dose and then another dose in a half an hour because breakfast and dinner on rising and before bed, you get good compliance. When you ask people to do things three, four, five, or six times a day, compliance does go down. So let me say it again, because of the stress and acids of metabolism today, people need more magnesium than they're getting almost always. In fact, chronic latent magnesium deficiency, CLMD, chronic latent magnesium deficiency, defined by Ron Aline 15 plus years ago, has taken its place as one of the most important laboratory observations of the decade. And if you're in the lower half of the serum magnesium range, you are chronically deficient. And if you're in the upper half of the serum range, you're sufficient. And I will tell you one study that we had to do with, which was an essential hypertension study, everyone who qualified for the study started in the lower half of the serum magnesium range. And the people who had the most blood pressure reduction moved higher into the upper half of the serum magnesium range. So we do have a generally available test to confirm need, that's serum magnesium. Being in the lower half means deficient, not just in the serum, but in the cells. And that's where the choline citrate is, to quote many colleagues, a miracle. Because from what we can tell from that study, including pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic data, near 100% of the magnesium that was given came in, and more importantly, stayed. Because not only is it hard to get magnesium in, it tends to run out through the kidney, sweat, and stool as fast as it comes in. So there is the DASH diet. This was a major National Heart, Lung, and Blood uh, Institute uh, funded project. And they did show that if you eat a vegetable-rich, fruit-rich, magnesium-rich diet for two years, you get a, a significant two or three millimeter reduction in your blood pressure. But notice you had to comply for a long time. I just heard from an individual, we gave him a sample of Perk Mag Plus Garden Choline Citrate. He reports that his systolic blood pressure the day before he started was 164. And after six days, just six days on Perk Mag Plus Guard and Choline Citrate, two capsules in the morning with a teaspoon, two capsules in the evening with a teaspoon, his blood pressure was 108. His doctor was thrilled. He was not hypotensive. He had become normotensive in just a few days. Doesn't happen always that quickly, but we have seen that and had it been reported. These people do not get hypotensive. What they do is normalize their blood pressure. And while we talk about 120 over 80, it's clear that 100 over 60 is a better blood pressure if you can maintain it, uh, than 120 over 80. And the new guidelines are that over 120 over 80 is no longer pre-hypertension, it is hypertension. And so 
the recommendation is to treat earlier and more intensely, although our approach is to give the PERC-MAG-PLUS guard with the choline citrate and then go by results. 